Hello, welcome to our Honors Accepted Student Reception Program. And for those of you who weren't able to make the Zoom meeting that we had on Monday for students or the Zoom meeting that we had on Tuesday for parents, we're gonna kind of recap some of the frequently asked questions and try to answer them for you best we can. But you don't wanna hear from me. I will introduce myself and then I'm gonna shut my mouth and let the students talk about the program because they know it um, the way that you're gonna know it. My name is Jennifer Schlegel, and I am the uh, director of the Kutztown University Honors Program. I'm also an associate professor of anthropology in the Department of Anthropology and Sociology. Uh, I have a PhD in linguistic anthropology. And really, the reason I told you that is I want you to know that I have an uh, incredible interest in the world around me and the world that we inhabit and the people who inhabit it. I am curious about everybody and curiosity is the thing that inspires me to work in honors and work with all these fabulous students because the students are even more curious than I. But I am curious about you and I hope you're curious about our program. And so we're just gonna start it off and I'm gonna turn it over to Abby Greco, who's going to lead most of this event. Take it away, Abby. Hi. So, uh personal introduction. My name is Abby. Like Dr. Schlegel said, I'm an elementary education major and I have a minor in performance and storytelling. I am a senior, so I will be graduating in May. Um, and yeah, I feel like that's enough for now. So let's do, Kumi, do you want to introduce yourself next? Sure. I'm Takumi Hans. I'm a junior double majoring in biochemistry and chemistry. Uh, Brooke, would you like to go? Sure. Um, I'm Brooke. I'm a senior. I'm a math major, and I have minors in economics and actuary science. Um, and obviously, I won't be able to meet any of you because I am graduating um, next month. So, uh, Liam? Hi. I'm Liam D. O'Brien. I am a senior and majoring in cinema, television, and media production. And, uh, I am now passing it off to Morgan. Hi, I'm Morgan. I'm a senior at Kutztown. I'm an education of the visually impaired major. Um, and I'm also like, I'm graduating in May in a couple weeks. That's very exciting. Um, I'll pass it off to Tyler. Hi, my name is Tyler. I am a secondary social studies education major with a music and minor. Um, I'm kind of a different case year-wise. This is technically my second year, but I have the credits of a junior, so I'll be graduating next year. Um, yeah, I'm going to pass it off to Lauren. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm a sophomore here at Kutztown, and I'm an art ed major, and I have a minor in German. Yeah. All right, so that's everyone. Um, we're going to jump into some of the questions and get this on the road. So, our first question goes to Tyler, and a lot of students want to know what is the difference between housing and honors housing? Like, what's the point? Awesome. Thanks, Abby. Um, so I also work as a mission, so and also on my tours, too. Um, so with regular housing, as a freshman coming in, you will be placed in, you'll have options for such as um, if you've toured campus, you know some of those names, um, but honors housing is special because coming in as a freshman, you have the option of Rothermel Hall, which is our newly renovated, um, well, newest renovated dorm hall, um, renovated in the summer of 2018, I believe, um, so really, really nice. I've lived there my First year, and actually this year as well, I chose to go back into Rothermel Hall. And Rothermel is really nice, not only because it's newly renovated, but also because you are surrounded by a community of honor students. So some of my next door neighbors were the people that I went to class with. So we formed study groups. Um, when we weren't studying, we would hang out a little bit. Um, so that's, that's your first year. You're going to be in Rothermel Hall. Um, after your first year, you have the option to. Um, either go back to Rothermel Hall like I did, um, or you can upgrade to Honors Hall, which is where the Honors Program is located. But above those offices are um, 
the honors apartment. So you have the option to go there as well. A um, little bit bigger. Um, so that is also another great option and an option to surround yourself with other honors students as well. You don't have to select honors housing, but personally, I really liked it because I liked being surrounded by like-minded people. Yeah, that's definitely the biggest benefit of honors housing. I have to say that when I was a freshman, um, Morgan actually lived right across the hall from me. She was one of the first friends I made in, like through Kutztown. So it's great that um, we had that experience and we got to carry it through to our senior years. So uh, our next question is for Liam. And students want to know if they will receive an honors advisor and um, if they can meet with the honors staff to discuss the program at any point. Oh man. Um, yeah, so you can meet with the honors staff at any point to discuss things. I know personally I have met with uh, Dr. Schlegel more often than she would prefer. Uh, and we're, no, it, it's, it's, it's great. You can walk in honors hall at any time pretty much and, uh, and get any sort of resources or communication that you need. Um, the honor staff is phenomenal. There's always somebody in there that's able to help, uh, as an honors advisor, um, when you have, uh, when you start and you start looking at your capstone, you're going to want to find a, uh, professor in your department or in the department that's going to work with you, uh, that's going to be applicable to your capstone. Me personally, I found a professor from an online class that I really liked the way that he had formatted it. I worked with him. Uh, I met with him uh, outside of class time and, uh, and we connected and I decided that we were going to be working together and he agreed. And so uh, that's how I got my honors advisor. Um, but definitely anybody in the honors program is more than able to work with you. Hey Morgan, I want to jump in here. How did you find your honors advisor? Because your honors advisor, your capstone advisor, is outside of your major. Yes, so my capstone project is adapting physics labs to make them tactile for students with visual impairments. Um, I don't like physics, I'll start with saying that. <laughs> but I took an honors class and it was physics and I um, sorry, my cat's like running around behind me, <laughs> but, um, we started talking about my major and we realized that the labs weren't accessible and we went from there, but, uh, and it just, all right, great. So our next question is actually for Morgan again. Um, what is different about an honors class? So one of my favorite things about Kutztown, it's probably the reason I chose it, was because of the smaller class sizes that you get when you come to Kutztown. Um, you're not sitting in a lecture of 100 people. Your class sizes are generally, generally smaller. Um, and when it comes to honors classes, they're even smaller. So you get that more direct one-on-one -on -one contact with the professor and you really get to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, for example, that physics class I took, um, the regular class had about 30 students in it, and when I took it, it had seven. Um, not, all, not all classes are like that, but because of the um, content of the course, it was definitely a lot smaller than most honors classes. Um, along with that, there are extra assignments that you have to complete for the course. Um, those are up to the professor and how they want to run the class. Um, could be an extra assignment here or there. It could be um, adds, like things added on to assignments. So if you're writing a paper, maybe an extra couple pages to the paper because you're held to a higher standard. Okay, does anyone wanna jump in and share anything about their favorite honors course that they've taken? Now, I have to say that not, honors courses are not the same every single semester, but based on um, what, we have taken so far is there a standout course that if it's offered again you think that students should definitely jump on to try to get into that course i can take actually I'll, oh, oh yeah great. go for it no 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 you go yeah i was gonna say that i had a comp class with amy she's like two last names amy lynch Beniak, 
and it was really great because she was always there for us and she was like hey guys i'm amy just email me at any time i know it's an honors course so you're gonna have a bit more homework but just know that i'm not here to watch you fail and i want to get you through this and that was really great because that was my first honors class and it was just a huge weight off my shoulders mm -hmm. it was so great yeah that's yeah kind, kind of similar to that um i took intro to communications my uh, spring semester of my freshman year with Professor Ironside and literally she was she's such a mom and she was she was so amazing and she treated us all so so kindly she she pushed us for sure like when we would deliver speeches she would definitely meet with us and be like hey here's what you did that was really good here's what you can improve upon so she really pushed us to reach excellence but at the same time her classes were run really low-key they were fun we just had a really good time all right great I'd, I'd also like to jump in if I can. Go for it, Liam. <laughs> so the only class that I've taken at uh, Kutztown that wasn't directly related to my major was uh, the search for social justice in America. And that actually was a course that I was taking specifically as an honors course where we got to travel to England, Scotland, and uh, and then, yeah, it was just England and Scotland for me, but other students were able to take the opportunity to travel to other places in Europe. Um, it was an absolutely phenomenal course, uh, and it really widened my view of what college could be, um, because I'm in a very specific field, obviously, with cinema, television, and media production. I don't, I, uh, understanding the search for social justice doesn't really fit into that. However, as an honors course, I was able to make an entire documentary about my experience and specifically focus my experience there into my major. That's what being in honors courses allows you to do, is to take something that may not be even related to what your major is and focus it in on what your experiences are, uh, tying into what you want to learn and how you want to grow. It was one of the cool, it was hands down the coolest experience I've had at Kutztown. Yeah, that's definitely something that um, if you have the opportunity to, you should try to take advantage of. Uh, the honors program offers a study abroad trip every year that if you apply for it and are um, chosen, you get a full paid trip to go on this study abroad experience and you get honors credit for it. Morgan, um, where did you go? It's something that I wish I could have done. In my <laughs> I was able to travel to Belize for two weeks um, in the summer going into my sophomore year um, and it was fully paid for and I just got to meet 23 other students who were going and it was an amazing experience. Great. So um, let's go ahead to our next question. Takumi, how can you meet the honors credit requirements? And when should you start taking honors courses generally? So this question is technically in two parts. Um, Takumi's gonna answer and then afterwards Liam is gonna put his two cents in there because his case is a little special. <laughs> so I guess you could say my case is kind of more on the traditional. I would recommend is right away. Uh, the way I set up my schedule for my first is to front load all of my honors courses. So I came out of my my freshman year with nine honors credits. And then I, in my sophomore year, I had a course by contract, which gave me another three and another regular honors course, which was uh, another three. So I am at 15 honors credits right now. So I only need six more to graduate from the program. And I'm planning on uh, getting those from uh, applying for independent studies to work on my capstone uh, this coming year. All right, Liam, do you want to jump in and tell us about your experience? Sure. So I, uh, I'm a transfer student. I came from Northampton Community College. And uh, when I transferred in, I transferred with 88 credits, which is slightly more than the average person who's transferring in after two years. Uh, and so in that time, I basically realized that uh, if I wanted to be part of the honors program, I had to hunker down. Like Takumi said, taking honors courses as quickly as possible is pretty much the only option for uh, uh, someone who's transferring in with that many credits. 
Um, but as a transfer student, I was able to uh, get a lot of opportunities because transfers are able to take up to three course by contracts. They're also able to uh, uh, take independent studies, honors, independent studies uh, for honors credits. Uh, unfortunately, in my situation, uh, my major does not offer honors courses or honors sections of courses that we had. So any course that I wanted to take, I either had to take as an honors independent study or as an honors course by contract regarding my major, which is another reason why I took that honors course that uh, uh, over the summer. So I could find, you know, I could, I could get more honors credits. But again, it turned out to be the coolest experience that I've had. So if you're sitting there and you're thinking, I'm a transfer student, my major doesn't offer honors courses or honors sections of courses. I don't really know if I can get all of my, uh, my honors credits just by course by contracts or independent studies. I can tell you it's, it's seriously, look outside your major, find other professors, talk to other as a honors students because opportunities like that will come up and it'll be the best, uh, best opportunity that you're able to take. Dr. Slagle, <laughs> I'd like to jump in here and I, I want to say that if you are transferring to KU and you're currently participating in your college's honors program, you can transfer in honors credit. So if you're at a community college like Northampton that has an honors program, you can transfer in up to 12 of your honors credits there to apply them to 21 credits at KU. If you're at uh, another university or college with which we don't have an articulation agreement, you can bring in up to nine honors credits from your university. So Liam's situation is a bit unique in that he came in, although he's quite capable of doing the honors work, he came in without any honors classes. But if you do have honors classes in your background from your university or college, we, you are able to bring some of them in. So that's helpful. Okay. Uh, Brooke, real quick, Liam talked about course by contracts. Can you explain them? Because sometimes they can be a little tricky to understand. Yeah, so I actually never took a course by contract, but I can still talk about it because I know what they are and I know how they work. Um, so course by contracts are when you are taking a class that's not an honor section of a course, um, but you would like to get honors credit for that course. So you and the professor teaching it will go and you'll sit down and you'll talk about the course, you'll figure out how you could add extra assignments or do something else to make it an honors worthy course. And then you can get credit for that. Um, but it really should only be done for courses that like can be used to propel you into your capstone. So like I'm a math major, I wouldn't take a history class and make that a course by contract because it, it wouldn't help unless I'm doing something and combining math and history. Um, but like my project was in, in the field of operations research uh, for my capstone. So I would have taken perhaps OR1, which is operations research one as a course by contract. But I uh, actually had enough honors credits that I didn't need to utilize the course by contract. But it was good to know I had that backup in case I did need it, so. Right, and a lot of students depend on them to get their honors credits, so it's very, a very great perk of honors, the fact that you can utilize a course that you have to take anyway, but use it into getting honors credits. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, our next question is for Tyler. Do I have to live on campus to be a part of the honors program? No, you don't. Um, so I've lived on campus uh, these my past two years, and I'll be living on campus again uh, my third year. Um, I am still a member of the honors program. Um, I have have I have friends like Abby who live off campus, um, and they are still able to participate in the honors program. You get all the same, um, all the same benefits that come with it, like um, access to the honors building, the color printing in the honors building. Um, you still get to pick your classes early. Um, and you still have the same requirements as well, such as the living and learning events, um, the community service as well. So yes, short answer, you can still participate in the honors program. Great. Um, Lauren, where can we find out where the, uh, where the requirements are? What are the requirements? Where can I find that out? <laughs> okay, so 
most of the time you can just ask anybody because they will gladly answer your questions. But for more information, you can go to Honors Hall in the downstairs in the office there. And up on the wall, there's so many papers. You just pick what you're looking for. There's even like a complete booklet that says like the overview of the honors program. That's where you'll find your course by contract forms and all your service forms and everything. But you, like I said before, you don't have to go there. You can just ask anybody and everybody's willing to help you. And that's a great thing too. All right, um, I'm gonna go to our next question. And Brooke, what are some of the perks of being an honors that you can't find on the website? So I, it's been a minute since I looked at the website, first of all. So if something's on there and I say it, I'm sorry. Um, but like the main perks for me um, that I noticed that weren't like the obvious ones, like the color printing, the early reg, the access to honors hall, were like the events that we have as well as like the people that you get to meet when you're in the honors program. Because I mean, I, in my four years at Kutztown, I made friends who were in the honors program and who weren't in the honors program, but my best friends are ones that were in the honors program because we went through that together. We rode the struggle bus together, but we, we made it out. Um, but also we have honors club, which you're automatically a part of if you're a part of the honors program. And through that, we have various committees and people who organize different events. I served as a committee chair for two years. I was on other committees for a little bit. And we have so many events, like there's events going on every week, multiple times a week. Sometimes it's crazy and hectic, but it's so much fun. And you get to spend time with people who you wouldn't necessarily meet. Like most of my best friends are not in my major. They're like completely different majors. I have a marketing best friend. I have a geology best friend and I'm like I barely know anybody in my major who's in the honors program but all my best friends I met through honors and not just like through my major and stuff like that so I think the real like main perk that's not just on the website is the people that you're going to meet when you're a part of the program yeah I definitely agree um Dr. Schlegel are there any scholarship requirements that come along with being an honors? There are. So if you are the recipient of a President's Academic Honors Scholarship or the Sesquicentennial Academic Honors Scholarship, you do have to remain active in the program. So you have to keep up with the requirements, your service hours, your living learning events, your honors credits. And if you receive the President's Academic Honors Scholarship, it's called, it'll look like P-A-H-S. It's different from the President's Merit Scholarship. I don't want to confuse the, the two. But if you receive the President's Academic Honors Scholarship, it comes with a two-year residency requirement. And if you receive the Sesquicentennial Academic Honors Scholarship, it comes with a three-year residency requirement, which means you're living on campus for three years. It seems onerous, uh, but from our first uh, batch of Sesquicentennial scholars who are graduating this year, actually, um, they found the reason why it was a good idea to live on campus three years. One, they got more involved in campus activities. Uh, one of our first scholarship, sesquicentennial scholarship recipients actually ended up becoming president of, you know, chemistry club because she ended up spending more time on campus, got involved in activities on campus, and is now fully invested in, in participating in the life of the university. And I think this is really what a, a uh, one of those intangibles of being an honors student is that you are an asset to the university. And to be living on campus is a way that your contributions to university life can really flourish and, and, and take root at the same time. So we do have those requirements for the President's Academic Honors Scholarship and the Sesquicentennial Academic Honors Scholarship. Okay, great, thank you. Um, our we have two more questions. Uh, the first one is, how can I confirm that I want to participate in the honors program? Um, and then when is this due? So if you are 
about to deposit or have already deposited, uh, give it about two weeks and you should receive an email um, with a statement of intent that you do wish to be in the program. And it will come with instructions saying, fill this out, send it back to honors, uh, the honors program email, and you'll say whether or not you wanna be in the program. Um, but again, give it about two weeks before you get that email just uh, as a buffer period. And um, because the deposit date is June 1st, a deposit at the university, uh, that is when the statement of intent is due. But again, if you deposit around June 1st, give it about two weeks. Um, and I guess your deadline for that would be pushed back if you deposit later. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> All right. And then our last, or no, another question is why should I participate in honors? Um, personally, I think you should participate in honors because it's been the most amazing experience. Um, 100%. The honors staff is so welcoming, so helpful. Um, there were times when, you know, you just get very stressed out and I would be freaking out. Like, I can't do this. I can't do college. And the honors program was such a great moral support, emotional support for me. Um, just helping you through it. There's always someone who's going to be there who's going through what you're going through and they are more than willing to help you out. Um, in addition to all the great perks like early registration and free color printing, um, I know as an education major the free laminating services literally the best. <laughs> um, so it really just uh, has been a great experience overall. There are so many opportunities like having a free study abroad trip or um, getting to present at a conference that most students on campus don't have the opportunity to. Um, so it's just, it's a really amazing experience. And if you have the option, definitely take it, especially at Kutztown. Uh, <laughs> Going along with some of the amazing experiences, why don't we go around and share what our favorite memory of being in honors has been um, so far, and then we'll close. So, Brooke, do you wanna start us off? Oh, I think you're muted. I definitely was. <laughs> oh, thanks. My favorite memory from honors is um, orientation um, through the honors program, but not when I was a freshman. I mean, it was okay when I was a freshman, but I liked it better when I was an upperclassman because I was actually chair of the committee that ran orientation. So I planned it, I facilitated it. I mean, I had help obviously, um, but I just really, really loved getting to plan it, getting to help out all of our new honor students get to campus, get familiar with campus, find their way around, get used to the program, and just really like welcoming everybody into the family, as well as seeing all of my like friends who would come back and volunteer for orientation. Like that was just, it was a crazy hectic weekend. And by the end of it, I was exhausted all the time, but it was so fun and very rewarding. And I absolutely loved it. All right. Do you want to popcorn someone? Uh, sure. Let's hand it over to Takumi. So I actually just remembered something. <laughs> um, so it was, it was last year in March. Um, one, of the, one of the perks of being in honors is that you can be selected with a group of other honor students to go to uh, a conference in Harrisburg to represent an, uh, the KU honors program and meet with a bunch of other honors programs at the other state schools. And the keynote speaker at our lunch was the state system chancellor. And the, the chancellor was doing his thing. Eventually there was this, we got into this Q and A session and I was with Liam and Brooke and they will tell you, Liam was trying to get this, the chancellor's attention for about 20 minutes. 
He just had his hand up for almost the whole time, and the, the chancellor just wouldn't look in our direction. So after the Q&A session ended, both Liam and Dr. Schlegel ran after the state system chancellor to talk to him about something really important that Liam was working on. And to this day, we call it that time Liam tried to fight the chancellor. <laughs> hey, I just want to clarify, I wasn't running after the chancellor, I was running after Liam. <laughs> because, and, and truly, here's the thing, honor students take advantage of opportunities. Liam saw an opportunity and he wanted to take advantage of it. He had a concern, he wanted to ad address some transfer issues and some other things, and um, I was there not because I, I was unsure of what Liam would do, but I always pitch this and everybody on this screen knows, I see myself, my role is to be the advocate for the honor students. And if there was an opportunity for me to help be an advocate for Liam in that moment, I was gonna do it. Um, it was his voice, his opportunity, and his interaction. If I could help to facilitate, advocate, no matter what the situation, no matter what the occasion, that's my role. And it doesn't always have to be honors related advocacy. You can come to me and I think each one of these students in this, in this recording, in this meeting, um, would, would say that, yeah, I came to her and she was able to help me out, um, advocate for me or support me or you know, promote me. That's what I'm here to do. So, um, I'd like to think that that's one of the perks of the program is that you have one more person on your side here at KU. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Tyler, do you want to share your favorite memory so far in honors? Yeah. So, okay. I think my favorite, uh, honors is awesome. A lot of amazing perks, but I think my favorite perk is that you have 24 seven access to the honors building, which I used frequently <laughs> when, when we were still at school. So um, kind of just to give you a snapshot and what my schedule looked like, I would wake up at around 6.37 in the morning. I would go to meetings, rehearsals, classes, club meetings and such. And then I would start my homework around 10 o'clock at night. So, and it was, quite frequently it was a lot um so i'm someone who needs like absolute silence when i study i get distracted by like the littlest things so the library closed at midnight and i needed more than two hours of time um and i yeah, i just needed my own space so going to the honors building and then working in those in our in the classrooms that are in there was really really beneficial i think the latest i was there was 4 15 in the morning so i definitely don't want to repeat that but <laughs> it's happened so yeah kind of just in general i have a lot of a lot of really good memories in that building of just working on homework stress eating so yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i'll popcorn it to morgan i would like to verify that i have seen tyler there at like all times of the night like anytime i was there he was in the building like doing work and all times of the night. It was crazy. Um, for me, I have so many favorite memories being an honor student and being in the honors program that it's really hard to pick. Um, the honors program has provided me with so many opportunities and I've been able to really be involved. One of my, it has to be one of my favorite things. We talked about it briefly earlier, but as an honors student in your freshman year, um, the choice is to live in the honors dorm. So when I was a freshman, I was in Schuylkill Hall. Abby lived across the hall from me and two doors down, um, I met my best friend and we met during honors orientation the first day. And from that day, we've been attached at the hip and we are now seniors living together in an apartment off campus. And it has been such an amazing experience to not only meet her, but to be able to share the honors experience with her. Um, we've been in, um, we were a part of the community service committee together. Um, she was in other committees and we talk about them and bounce ideas off each other. And it was just so amazing to be able to meet her and have all that experience of living in um, the dorms with other people who are honor students experiencing the same things. Um, there are so many perks of living with people who are, have the same work ethic as you do. Um, in the 
freshman dorm, everyone had their door open, but it wasn't loud, it wasn't noisy. You could walk down the hall and you could pop in anyone's room and they were doing work. But if you said, oh, hey, like, how's it going? You could have a conversation. Um, I can't tell you how many times I stopped in Abby's room walking back to my room being like, hey, be a distraction. I don't want to do my work right now. And it's just that sense of community is probably my favorite thing that I had on campus. Yeah, I definitely, um, one of my favorite memories was after, um, on the day that we moved in, um, we went to a pizza party and then came back to our room to start decorating and getting everything together. And um, my roommate, who also is my best friend, just like, kind of like Morgan, um, I met her through honors and now she's my best friend. I love her. I've lived with her all four years. Um, so we were in our room unpacking, decorating, and listening to Hamilton, the musical, and Morgan stopped in, and we were just jamming out, and I don't know, it was great. It was such a wholesome moment, but it was definitely one of the better moments of my college career. Um, but my specific favorite memory um, was probably getting to travel to Baltimore to present at the Northeastern Regional Honors Conference, conference, which um, Morgan also got to attend. So we went down to Baltimore with Dr. Schlegel for a few days, got to present our research projects, and made some really great friends um, while we were there. So that was something that I never would have had the opportunity to do if I wasn't in honors. Um, all right, I think Lauren, you're our last, oh, Lauren and then Liam, and then we'll wrap this up. All right. Do you want to share your favorite memory? Sure. I don't know if this is my favorite memory, but definitely one of the best ones. Um, like, I forget who it was. I think it was Dr. Schlegel said, you're also a part of the honors club when you join the honors program. And we do merchant trick-or-treat, which is, since the kids don't get to trick-or-treat in Kutztown, all the clubs line up on Main Street and we all put out candy and we just turn up the music and it's a great time. It's so much fun, there's such good energy there. And it's really cute to see all the kids dress up and even the college kids, they come around, you get to see your friends and you get to pick up some treats along the way. And that's just a really nice bonding experience, I think, when you get to join the honors club too, because you get those different experiences to be a part of something that you wouldn't have. And I think that's great, Liam. So as I've said, I'm a transfer student. And uh, when I was at Northampton, I was really involved in the uh, Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society there. Uh, when I got to Kutztown, I was not only a transfer student, but I was also a non-traditional student. And I also was, uh, uh, I, I spent the last year as a commuter student. And so I really felt like I had there was there was a conversation that I had when I first got there with Dr. Schlegel and I was in the office and I made frustrations uh, with this was it sounds of more Pittstown has to offer you. The first is the my most favorite moment because in that moment I realized I was like, oh arrogant. Uh, and and what I found was honestly being in Honors Hall and being able to go there 24 um, seven, like a lot of people have mentioned, but also being there and being able to talk to the honor, other Honors students and learning from them and experiencing what they are going through and sharing our, those experiences and laughing and, and Abby walking in on me crying on the floor when I'm applying for grad school and <laughs> so many things and being able to ask, uh, uh, Dr. Schlegel and Alexis and the other people working in the office uh, questions that honestly I can't ask my professors or or people without fear of being judged or or questioned and things like that and understanding that when I'm in honors hall you can have conversations with other people who are of a like mind and understand that you're here to learn and you're here to grow and you're here to share your experiences. It's my favorite moment at honors. Well, thank you guys all for sharing. Thank you for being a part of this conversation. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Dr. Schlegel 
and um, Alexis is going to share her screen with us so we can end the meeting. Yeah, go ahead. All right, thank you all KU Honor students for your fantastic awesomeness. And I am hopeful that those who are watching feel that fantastic awesomeness. And the reason they feel it is because that's who they are too. We're looking for you to come to KU. We're looking for you to choose KU and choose to participate in KU Honors because you have as much to offer as these students do. We're replacing, you know, we're losing a, an amazing bunch of seniors and you're gonna take their places. I have to say something, if you are a freshman, a senior in high school, and for our seniors here at KU, this is not the senior year you planned. It isn't. And what I'm seeing and what I'm hopeful is that you're able to find the opportunities in the obstacles and that you're taking it easy on yourself, right? So um, my little bit of seriousness here is truly, I want you to take it easy on yourself. You probably are not doing your absolute best work right now. And that's okay. That's okay. As long as you're striving to do the best that you can under the situation we have, it's all gonna be fine. I don't know what's gonna happen this fall. I don't know when orientation is gonna take place. I don't know what classes are gonna look like. We're working it out. But I am impressed by the way, the resiliency of honor students and actually the entire KU community through all of this. I hope you're finding the resiliency in you. And if you're struggling, again, that's okay. Please reach out to us, um, look at the contact information, uh, check us out on the website, email honorsprogram at kutztown.edu if you have any questions. Um, we are here to help and we are looking forward to you joining us here at KU because it's good to be golden. It really is. Thank you. Okay, so I think we're done. Um, Alexis was going to share her screen, um, but her maintenance guy is in her apartment. So that might just come when she's editing this video. I don't really know. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's all right, Abby. So again, with the resiliency, we're dealing with the bumps and bruises as they come along. And we are gonna get through this thing. So. Thank you for attending or watching today's event. If you have additional questions, let us know. We are here to help. We are here to answer your questions. So we'll just um, end the meeting right here. Okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs>